You know, today's video is exactly the perfect example of how when you get a wage increase in 2022, like a lot of people have because of inflation, that it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you are now poorer than you were before the pandemic. If you look back into 2019 and how much people made, obviously it was less than it is today. But we did not have this insane inflation that we have right now that's basically at an unknown amount. But right now, the average rent in the US is $2,040 a month. And Zillow is saying that the average person now needs to work a 63-hour work week just to make the rent, guys. We're not talking about the rest of the expenses that people have. We're talking 63 hours a week just to afford the rent. That is insane and I don't see how people are going to do this. In the past five years, rent has increased about 37%, while wages during the past five years have only grown 23%. Now, already there's a big discrepancy there by about 14% difference between how much wages have gone up versus rent. And then when you throw in you know, this record high inflation that we haven't had since the 80s uh, into the mix, it's basically just a recipe for disaster, guys. And this ties in perfectly with what we talked about before about rent prices finally starting to come down and why you're going to see more rental vacancies even in a time when more people need to rent than buy right now because people can't afford to buy. Because the simple answer is people are moving in together. The whole trend that we saw during the pandemic where people you know, separated and moved into their own place is now starting to go in complete reverse, mainly out of affordability. You're seeing people get roommates, you're seeing people move back in with family, and what does that do? It creates more vacancies and more available rentals in the market, and it puts pressure on landlords to lower the price to get the units rented. We got one for sale. This is one ambitious flip. They bought this place a little over a year ago for 975k, and now they want 3.75 million, trying to triple their money in a year. Obviously the place is done to the nines, but I don't know guys, let me know in the comments. Do you think they're gonna get that price? I don't think so. And then when you look at areas like Miami, here where I live, or different areas in the Sun Belt, check this out. Somebody who lives in Miami now, guys, this is what I've been telling you in the past few videos of just how much inflation and the cost of living is up here now. The average worker in Miami now needs to work 24 hours more per month to pay the rent than they did pre-pandemic. And in Tampa, people need to work an extra 20 hours a month to pay the rent. So that's, that's insane. If you ask me, it's just unsustainable and it's not gonna last. You're gonna see more and more people shack up together, living in the same place to afford rent. And you're gonna see so many rentals come on the market probably over the next year as the recession gets worse and these different inflation factors creep up and people just can't afford things. And that's gonna ultimately help everyone out in the end because even though it kind of sucks right now that people have to resort to this, in the end, it's gonna to lead to lower prices. These landlords can't afford to keep the units vacant forever, guys. I know we've seen some places around here that look like that, but that's definitely not the average rental, you know? It's not normal for a place to sit vacant for six months with no tenant because the landlord doesn't wanna lower the price. You do see that here a lot in Miami, but that's not the norm. And the only dangerous thing that I think people need to watch out for is these different software programs and algorithms that these property management companies are trying to use now in order to maximize their profits. And from what I've heard so far, what they try to tell these property managers to do is to leave some units vacant anyways in order to help prop up the price. But hopefully that's not going to last for too long because we could possibly, one, see regulation against doing that, or if we don't see that, then my guess is we're probably gonna see just too many places start coming on the market and these, these companies are gonna be hemorrhaging too much money and they're gonna be forced to rent it at a lower price. I don't see another way through it because you know it's one thing if you have 100 rentals to keep 10 of them vacant in order to raise the price on the others. But when you have 
30 or 40 of them vacant, that's not sustainable. And these companies are not gonna be able to get away with that. Because it gets even worse, guys. You know, there was a report also from Realtor.com that shows that renters are struggling to pay for their housing costs. And even though prices are coming down a little bit, it's not enough yet to really make a dent in people's budgets. So that's why I'm saying in the end, this is gonna be a good thing, but we're gonna have to go through the temporary pain to get the ultimate gain. That's basically where we're at with the entire economy right now, not just the housing market. Super old house for sale. This is definitely one of the more curious listings we've seen on the channel. This property was listed back in June for 1.9 million and they quickly got a contract one month later. We don't know how much, but the curious thing is that the property is still under contract and has not closed and it's almost December. So that's pretty suspicious. Not sure what's going on here. Now we've already talked about how Redfin is in trouble and it just seems to get even worse by the week for these guys. Redfin shares have dropped another almost 10% and they're saying this is due to the plunge in pending home sales, which is also down by 32%. And I've been telling you guys all these things in my videos. I know a lot of you appreciate it and really pay attention to what I'm saying, which is really good. But there's a lot of people that don't wanna believe this stuff, guys. But, you know, look at Redfin stock. Look at these numbers. This is not made up. I'm not talking about things that aren't happening here. This is all reported. This is all available for anyone to see and read right now. So Redfin stock right now has lost 88% of its value since the beginning of the year. And the S&P 500 is down by about 18% since the beginning of the year. And median home price declines literally saw the biggest drop that we've seen since 2012. We saw from September to October, the median home price, the sale price, fell by 1.4%, guys. That's the biggest month over month drop since October 2012. So if you don't think that's significant, then I don't know what to tell you. I think that uh, you're just gonna have to see more losses coming in the next several months for for you to really understand that this is for real but i think it's always better to be ahead of the curve and that's what we're trying to do here on this channel and also anyone who is celebrating all these uh reduced interest rates you know oh my god the the rates went down you know now's a great time to buy well look at this guys for the average borrower you're still looking at almost 7.4 percent right now so that's if you have a 700 credit score. And a lot of people don't even have that. So imagine you're probably looking at an even higher rate. So these, these lower interest rates have basically done nothing to move the needle in this market right now. And you don't have to take it just from me. There was a real estate investor who's basically a home flipper in Ohio. And he also has a large TikTok following and he was out in the news this week talking about how he's losing about 30 grand on his latest flip over in Ohio. And what he did is he bought this home for 248,000 and he has about $10,000 worth of work into the property. Now he's only receiving offers for about 260K. So on the surface, it sounds like he's gonna make a small profit guys, but remember there's closing costs. There are selling fees for your real estate agent. There are taxes to be paid, especially capital gains when you're flipping. And because of all of that, he's actually set to lose 30 grand on this property. And a lot of people are saying, well, how come you don't just rent it out and make money that way? He doesn't want to do that. He says he'd rather take the loss and move on and go find another deal and make it back that way rather than try to make some money with a bunch of headaches. Because like I've told you guys, being a landlord is a headache and it's not for everyone, including this guy. I mean, he would rather lose 30 grand than be a landlord. So think about that for a minute. Every time you are thinking about becoming a landlord in the future, just remember that story that home flippers would rather lose 30 grand than become a landlord. In this same story, they were talking about another home flipper who bought this property in Texas for 340K. They spent about 45,000 on upgrades. So you have about 385 in the property already and they were hoping to flip it for 450. So that would be a sizable return, at least probably 20, 25 grand after it's all said and done. They listed the property in October and they've been lowering the price about every 10 days because obviously when you're flipping, time is of the essence. And so now they're already down to asking 399 
and nobody has bought the place yet guys so flippers are going to start losing big time who aren't aware that the market has already turned the one good thing is is these guys have a good point at the end of all this is they're saying that even though they they're losing money i like this lesson to be learned at the end they said you learn a lesson in every deal and one guy says, I've got a buddy that lost $100,000 on his first deal, and now he's a multimillionaire. So obviously stories like that are not very common. Most people can't recover from a $100,000 loss in real estate, but because this guy did recover from that, now he's a multimillionaire. So what are the lessons to be learned from that? Well, number one, patience, because with the patience, he was able to go ahead and secure his next deal, keep moving up in the world. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> and the other big lesson to be learned from this is like, you know, real estate investing can be risky. If somebody can lose $100,000 or even 30 grand on one of these flips, you gotta be ready for stuff like that and have the bankroll to be able to absorb these type of losses if you're a real estate investor. You know, that's flipping is personally not my cup of tea. I would rather be a landlord because I'm all about the slow and steady gains and I can handle the situations that come up with being a landlord since I have an extensive history being a real estate agent and working with a lot of tenants over the years. So, you know, you pretty much get the system nailed down after doing it for several years. And so, to me, I'd rather hang on to my assets and accumulate my net worth and have my equity go up in value over the years and continue to collect more and more in rent as the years go by. I like the slow and steady approach, but that's me. Either way, you need to have patience is the moral of the story here. You got to have patience if you want to be a long term cash flow real estate investor like me, or if you want to be a home flipper like this person, um, you still need patience, guys, because even though flipping is a quick return business, you can easily lose your shirt, you know, within a matter of months and lose your entire life savings if you don't know what you're doing. It still requires patience because your first deal or even your third deal could go very wrong and you can end up losing a lot of money. And so you need to have patience in finding the right deal and you need to have patience in recovering from uh, potentially deals gone wrong. Look at this. Half of these areas I can't even walk on the sidewalk because everything's still flooded from the rain we got yesterday. I got different little branches falling down here. It's the week of Thanksgiving and we're getting tropical storm conditions here essentially. Yesterday was nothing but high winds, ton of rain. It's crazy guys. And speaking of real estate stories, there was another interesting story that one of my viewers, Scott, shared with me. He is actually involved in this personally. Uh, basically, his girlfriend helped get this illegal Airbnb ring in his apartment complex shut down because they moved into this apartment complex and obviously they don't allow short-term rentals like many of them don't. And they were noticing the apartment next door, people were basically slamming the door all night long and even throughout the day. And after a few weeks of this going on, uh, his girlfriend works nights, so she's trying to sleep during the day. And hearing these door slams throughout the day, she woke up and saw out the window people leaving with suitcases. And they're always seeing new people coming and going with suitcases, different cars parked outside and taking up more parking spaces. So lots of things out of the ordinary to say the least. And so she ended up looking online and found that exact apartment on Airbnb along with a few others in the same complex. And she ended up reporting it to the management company there. And needless to say, they shut these people down in a hurry and they're not doing Airbnb there anymore. And so basically these people were doing rental arbitrage. If you don't know what that is, it's when you rent a place out, you know, you, you lease it for a year and then you turn around and put the place on Airbnb is what happened. So in the end, she ended up getting all four of the Airbnbs that were being run by the same person shut down in this apartment complex. And these people were paying $1,500 a month in rent. So they were either faced with the decision of, you know, break the lease or keep hemorrhaging $1,500 a month per unit in order to uh, stay in business or try to absorb that loss. 
And so that's a pretty good lesson too, guys. If you're gonna get into the Airbnb business, short-term rental business, whatever, you need to make sure you're doing things on the up and up because losing that kind of money or paying to break leases in different areas is probably gonna cost a significant amount of money. And that's what people get when they try to break the rules and do things illegally. And at least there was a little bit of justice served there. But uh, you know, I think about how many other places everywhere else that people are still getting away with stuff like that. So if you see things like this, you can report it and maybe get it shut down. Because ultimately, when you have an apartment complex like that, the more units that are doing stuff like this, then there's less units that are available for the average person to come in and rent who actually needs it to live there versus someone just trashing the place and renting it out 24 seven. I'm starting to feel some raindrops, so I'm kind of walking fast back to the car because I'm pretty sure we're gonna get hit with some rain. Now, if anybody's ever tried to go to a concert over the past several years, you probably realize that the concert tickets are through the roof these days and the, the latest scam that's going on and the reason why this is coming to light is through the recent tour that was announced by Taylor Swift. Obviously, she's a huge pop star and people are eating up their tickets left and right, but basically Ticketmaster is this huge monopoly and they control over 90% of all the concert ticket sales pretty much worldwide, okay? And there were so many tickets trying to be sold for Taylor Swift that it basically broke the website. And, but somehow, a bunch of the bots and scammers were able to get a hold of a ton of the tickets and put them up for resale, guys. And I'm sure, like I said, if you've been to a concert over the past several years, you've seen this before. You see the tickets get announced for sale they come online and then, you know, the average ticket price, like what, $200, $300, maybe for somebody really popular. And then they're immediately sold out less than a few minutes after they go live. And then the next day, or even later that day, you'll see them all come back online for double or triple the price of what they were originally. I recently experienced this too. For me, Metallica is my favorite band. I've, they've been my favorite band since I was a little kid. And they recently came to uh, Miami and I haven't seen them in five years last time I saw them was in 2017 So I went to the Hard Rock Hotel and they were playing there the ticket prices were unbelievable guys The regular prices were supposed to be about $300 a ticket Not cheap, but you know, it's Metallica. It's affordable for a one-time event that who knows when the next time you're gonna see them. well because of all these bots and all these scammers the final price that I ended up having to pay was about $520 a ticket. It cost a little over $1,100 to go to the show. And normally I would never pay for something like that. That sounds ridiculous. I've never paid so much to go to a concert in my entire life. But because it was my favorite band and I didn't take any vacations this year, I've been saving a bunch of money. You know, I figured that's the one thing I can splurge on for the year, so I did. And it was worth every penny because it was such a fun show. I was super close, you know, closer than I've ever been at any other show. So even though uh, at first it felt like a ripoff, it ended up being worth it. But the thing is, guys, these scammers are making money off of everybody who feels exactly like me and people who are these huge Taylor Swift fans that are gonna pay whatever it takes to go to the show. You know, in this article, somebody took a screenshot showing tickets there the average ticket price like $750. And on top of that, Ticketmaster is to blame for this as well because they allow this to happen, first of all. And second of all, they charge exorbitant fees on their ticket prices as well, which basically goes towards nothing. It's just an extra way to rip you off and take more money from music fans. Because I remember, I'm old enough to remember that before Ticketmaster was like the number one place to buy tickets from, you could go to really great, great shows for less than $100 a ticket for even big artists like Metallica and other people. So, but those days are basically gone and it's just yet another thing that we're dealing with in the world of scams today. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the bell notification down below. And if you don't wanna wait for my next one, check out this video right over here and I'll see you in the next one.